I also welcome Dr. Bagal Koti sir on behalf of Professor, Professor Ramakrishna More College, Professor Ramakrishna More College, Department of Commerce. This session, this session, I also welcome Honorable Principal of our college, Dr. Lobo sir, for Hello. this session. I am introducing today's guide, Professor Sidappa Bag uh, Bagal Koti sir, was. Huh. distinction and scholarship for the studies he completed 18 research pair research Bora. project funded by various agency he guided Bora. 22 Bora. research Bora. 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 candidates for the phd and eight for mphil degrees he published more than 70 papers he was a resource person for training programs for a teachers and elected representatives, administrator and department functionaries. He delivered more than 150 lectures, including endowments and special lectures. He was a member of editorial committees of journals. He was a life member of professional bodies and association. He was also consultant to NGOs and government. He was a deeper dean faculty of social science, member of Sinditec Academic Council, director IQSC of Karnataka University, Dharwad. Please, sir, guide us systematic literature review. Yeah. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Um, I take this opportunity to thank my very old friend, Dr. Benjamin Lobo, principal of uh, Ramakrishna More College, and uh, Madam Archana Mali for giving me this opportunity. So uh, without going into much formalities, I will share my presentation uh, so that we can uh, go ahead with the discussion. And if you have a vote of thanks, then you will have a vote of thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me, there is some slight problem. We we'll just resolve it. Hello, ha, recording were this the kitty minute was there. Ho, ho, ho. ठीक है फक्त मी डाउनलोड केले की तुला फाइनल सांगते मी कारण मला अंदाज नाहीये पहिल्यांदाच करतीये मी नाहीतर राहू दे होते इथे झाले माझ तीन पॉइंट इज दी स्लाइड विजिबल मॅडम येस सर Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's, it's visible. Yes, but sir. I think I should, I should make it a screen mode or just stop uh, that and do that. It's taking a lot of time for me. Okay, somehow it is not taking the screen mode but anyway the slides are visible so i will just continue uh, my presentation i have been giving the task of uh, talking about conducting uh, review of literature since it is a phd coursework i have titled it as a guide for beginners now there are two sessions allotted to me in the first session I will discuss about how to go about conducting a literature review. And in the second session, I'm going to talk about how to use artificial intelligence tools which are available uh, around us and make the uh, literature review more effective. So uh, in the present session, I'll be talking only about how to conduct a literature review. Not 
moving. One second, I don't know why this slide is not moving. What is the problem? I'm not able to understand. Uh, sir, Akshay Mutal, please. Sometimes uh, such issues occur. Sir, so you, PowerPoint the, yeah, you need to close the uh, presentation and then once again share it. I think that will work. I will rejoin once again if you don't mind. I'll just rejoin once again. I'll just. Ah, hello, sir. Your uh, voice is not uh, audible. Yes. No. N not audible. No. Okay, no problems. So you are not audible. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sir, I hope yes, now it is sir. audible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So literature review has three main functions. Providing a comprehensive summary and analysis of existing research on a particular topic. What I said was, when you choose a particular topic, we need to understand what has been done so far and how we can go about next. Secondly, its purpose is to identify, evaluate and synthesize the relevant literature. It's not merely a recounting of what has been done, but evaluating it from the point of view of how useful it is to my research. 
how I can use the concepts, the methodology, the data, and the ideas used by the literature to my research. So it is evaluating the usefulness of that research and synthesizing all the points. Some may be for, some may be against, there may be differences, there may be divergences, there may be disagreements. So how I synthesize them for strengthening my argument that is the purpose of literature review and more importantly it helps us to provide a clear understanding of the current state of knowledge and highlighting the gaps and establishing the context of our own research so the purpose of literature review mainly is to identify the research gap so unless we study what has been done before we cannot identify or we cannot justify the gap so in order to justify the gap literature review has to be done so once the gap is identified your research is automatically justified so to establish the context as to why you are doing that what is there but why you are doing that the literature review helps to understand then the purpose of literature review is to understand the field in which you are working Understand the field means what has been done, how it has been done, who has done that, in what context it has been done, what methodologies have been adopted, what conclusions have been drawn. So all these aspects need to be understood. So it's firstly to understand the field of your work. Secondly, to identify the gaps, identify the gaps. So gaps in the sense, not necessarily gaps as such, but there will be weaknesses in the methodology in identifying the samples in the treating the data also in treating the in analysis analysis also there may be some mistakes so how to correct them or the existing research might have done um, might have been very good but the conclusions it, it has drawn might be little bit erroneous so how to correct that so identification of gaps is not merely identifying the gaps but also identifying corrections uh, and improvements over what has been done so third and most important is avoiding duplication so it is said that there is no meaning in reinventing the wheel. So if you're doing that, then it is not research at all. So we have to avoid as far as possible duplication and replication. That means simply a waste of time and resources. So in order to avoid duplication, we should know what has been done and what has been not done. That's the basic purpose of the literature review. And uh, fourth and important one is to refine research questions. So as I mentioned in earlier uh, research, there may be research works undertaken, but those research questions may have to be re-asked, rephrased in the modern context. Say, for example, yes, for sir, uh, is, sir, yeah, sorry yeah. to disturb, yeah. but uh, can, uh, will you do the slide show, sir? So by that way, we can easily see all the slide. So first I should, show, so, but the slide is not moving. No, slide is moving, but if you will make the slide show, then it will be quite easily visible. I have made it slideshow only. Okay. I made it slideshow. Okay. But okay. we are able to see the second slide only. Yeah. Second slide, introduction slide. Okay. It has not gone to the next. No, sir. Okay. I will just try now. Uh, now we can see the third slide. For yeah. First then, slide. then I will keep it here only. We'll just uh, make the point little wider. So these applications have some problems. So Windows 11, Windows 1, etc. But anyway, these are the purposes, purposes of literature as I was talking about. Understanding the field, identifying the gaps, avoiding duplication, refining research questions, establishing theoretical framework. Now, dear friends, since you are beginners, for research, every research has to be based on some theoretical foundation. Whatever discipline you are doing research, whether it is sociology, whether it is economics, whether it is political science, whether it is history, whatever uh, discipline it may be, the research must be based on the theoretical premises of that discipline. I, I don't mean to say you have to take a theory. But some of the concepts used in the theory have to be used as basis for asking the questions and raising the research questions. Mm -hmm. So therefore, to establish research theoretical framework, literature review is essential. And last but not the least, 
to support your methodology that means whether you are choosing secondary data primary data or whatever sampling techniques you are going to choose so for that purpose your literature review will help so in order to understand the field to identify the gaps to ask so relevant research questions to develop a theoretical framework and to support methodology literature review is very very essential then if the literature review is essential next comes what are the steps to conduct a literature review first one is there are eight steps but anyway these steps are customizable you can have more number or you can have less number but anyway this is the process of doing a literature review it includes defining your research question so once you choose your topic you will have to uh, specify your research problem and raise research questions then second one after you raise research questions conduct a preliminary search of literature what has been done earlier then thirdly once you uh, do a preliminary search then in order to find the most relevant literature you have to develop a search strategy wherein you choose some keywords keywords and key phrases and based on that you search the literature now especially in online searching this keywords and key phrases etc come to a lot of help in earlier times when we did it manually it was not so easy for us to locate the sources but now with electronic database the searching has become very very easy for that purpose you need to develop a strategy what to what uh, word to include what word to exclude where we have to put and where we have to put are so these all these things have to be clearly specified so if you have to get a relevant literature then fourth one is search and select sources so once you do a uh, search strategy then you have to look at the sources where your resources are whether you have to go to a library or you have to access an internet resource or you have to go to a repository which, which where there are so many of repositories nowadays so you have to se select the sources once you select the sources you need to identify the papers or books or the material which you have to read then based on that after reading you have to organize your findings here organization is based on many parameters now some do it on the basis of uh, the year that is they have a chronological pattern of organizing the findings some have thematic means based on the research questions research objectives they divide the literature view on certain themes so it will be thematic for example if i am doing on agricultural development in india then i may do it on the basis of the agricultural productivity then cropping pattern then government programs then uh, farmer issues etc so these on these four themes i may uh, classify my review and then find out the uh, what has been done so far so organize your findings based on some parameter i'll be talking about that later also then once you organize the next step is to analyze and synthesize so analysis and synthesis is finding out similarities who all have a consensus on a particular topic then finding out divergences who all have divergences why they diverge for example in agricultural economics if you have uh, studied that paper in 1970s there was a controversy on small size and the profitability some economists like amartya sen said small sizes is more profitable than large sizes whereas ashok rudra another economist from west bengal he said no no large farms are profitable so there was a controversy now why that controversy arose and how this controversy is resolved has to be seen. that is what is analysis and synthesis so similarities consensus differences trends patterns all those patterns in thinking patterns in conceptualization patterns in data usage all these come under these six pattern so once you come out with these things then you are able to write the literature review then writing the literature review is also very very uh, tedious exercise very very systematic exercise and you have to do it in a systematic manner i will come to that point later on write to the literature review and last but not the least for whatever re work you have referred you have to cite for it if you do not cite it will not have validity unless you properly cite the source from where that particular idea is taken 
the author who has written it the journal where it was published the book where it was available so we do not write this source then the literature review will not be complete so therefore in uh, conducting literature review these processes these steps have to be kept in mind so this is what the steps to conduct literature review now let me go one by one these steps now first step is as i mentioned define your research question because that is a starting point there is a saying that well begun is half done so if you ask a proper research question then most of your future problems will be automatically taken care of so for this purpose you can consult your guides you can consult your peers or consult the people in the field for example there will be people working in that area already maybe government officers or maybe scientists or maybe experts you can consult them and try to uh, concretize your research questions so clearly define your research question say for example as i said my problem is to find out whether small farms are more efficient or more profitable so my my research question is to find out whether small farms are more efficient so here i have two things one is the size of the farm small farm medium farm large farm etc then efficiency so efficiency in terms of productivity per acre output per acre so this is how i i clearly identify what it needs to be studied and what needs to be done so you have to clearly define your research question once you define research question you are ready to take off that is your launching pad you are ready to take off and i have just mentioned here consider frameworks like uh, pico for social sciences this is a common a uh, framework which we come across that is population that what is the population we are studying about intervention that is what is the intervention there is a program by the government or by ngos or by anybody else what is the intervention that has been planned and comparison comparison is always done in social science research before after or with or without such comparison is made there is also called as impact analysis also so comparison then outcome that is what has been the result of that intervention how different section segments of population are affected whether they were happy before or happy after whether they are happy with it or happy without it for example in karnataka there are a number of free schemes going on so how happy people are what what was the situation before what was the situation now that framework we can adopt so if you adopt this clearly we can classify our literature review and come out with an important findings important findings for our further research so this is the first step once you identify your research question properly and for that which i said you need to read yourself and also consult your guide and peers and even men in the field so once you uh, define your research question the next uh, uh, you know the step is to conduct a preliminary research for, for, for instance you do not know as a beginner where all the sources are available but however certain important things you need to keep in mind and and where which are available in on a free basis and which are accessible to everyone there are there is no restriction as such so use academic databases for conducting a preliminary search and i have mentioned few of such academic databases so there is social science index source index there is google scholar which is very very popular there is econlit especially for economics researchers econlit can be the starting point then for psychology psych info is the starting point then there is ebsco which is a consortium of databases wherein if you go there you can search by subject by your discipline by psychology by commerce by economics by political etc then you can do that then there is eric also which is again another uh, consortium of data uh, databases uh, which is again uh, very very useful then there is ssr and social science research network there is pubmed there is proquest there is pinas there is jstor there is semantic scholar etc now jstor and proquest are paid you, you need to have subscription if your library has subscription you will get you will get access but otherwise the remaining um, databases which i mentioned are uh, freely available sources so you can go there and you can search what has been done what has been done identify the articles or studies related to your research question and sort, sort them and try to 
refine your research question or further search strategies for yourself okay and here what you have to look at is look for review articles and seminal papers now let me uh, bring to your notice that many journals they publish review articles regularly for example uh, i am talking of economics in economics there is a journal called as journal of economic literature published by american economic association it is a quarterly comes every 3 months and in each journal of journal of economic literature there is a review paper on specific studies for example 1992 review of research in environmental economics was done so if anybody is taking environmental economics then that can be the starting point of their study similarly the uh, so, uh, icssr in india it has published around 17 volumes of reviews of social science research in india so that can again if you go to say economics again you have division wise agricultural economics industrial economics labor economics public finance international economics money and banking international trade etc so by subject divisions you have all the uh, review of the studies conducted so far i think it was published in 2017 the first one was in 1977 or so and in 2017 the second uh, review has been published if you go the, to that icssr uh, reviews you will get all the mit, uh, research summarized what has been done so these are the review articles and even there are journals in india also for example there is indian uh, journal of political economy published by gokle uh, uh, school of economics and politics in pune there also you find a review article similarly in economic and political weekly also there are review articles they call it as perspectives so if you read such articles you will get clear ideas at what what research has been done and in what direction research is going so that is how you can find out your uh, further studies and more importantly look at seminal papers seminal are uh, path breaking contributions some papers are there which have made lot of impact which have changed how the research has been done uh, as i was telling you about farm size and productivity amartya sen did that ashok rodra did that when it came to rural non farm employment vaidyanathan in india did that so there are such seminal papers for example if you go to this um, abhijit banerjee's works then he uh, introduced experimental economics so all these are seminal works so if you read those seminal works then obviously you will get new ideas and you you will be able to go ahead with searching so initially you have to do a preliminary research from the academic databases i don't mean to tell you that you, you you only have to go to internet sources we can go to libraries where there are generic sources like en encyclopedia there are uh, collections like encyclopedia and other subject uh, related uh, books and you can just dictionaries also dictionaries also you can browse through the concepts and you can identify the things so encyclopedias and subject specific dictionaries will help you to gather idea about what to uh, search about and where we have to search about so that is the st strategy which you have to adopt so second step is conducting a preliminary search and once you do a preliminary search you know what has been done so far and what are the major themes major concepts major ideas that are been going about and here in the in the third step you need to develop a search strategy because you need to review almost all i, I don't say everything but majority of the uh, research that has been carried so far you need to review that so for that purpose you need to identify all the works in your chosen field of study so if i have chosen agricultural development then i have to look at all the works that have been done not only in india but also in other countries which are similar to india so for that purpose i need to develop a search strategy and for that purpose there are three important parameters one is develop keywords this is very very important because it is like uh, if you go to a forest finding out certain medicinal herb at least you should know whether it is a creeper a creeper or a shrub 
or a tree if you do not know that then you will go on looking for everything but if you know it is a creeper then look you look only at creepers to find out the medicinal aspect so like that you have to develop a keyword keyword and the keywords indicate the main concepts which will be used by you as a researcher and these main concepts can be used for uh, identifying or locating the literature sources for example i said again agriculture development then i will say small size then uh, cropping pattern then agricultural production green revolution etc so these are my keywords which i'll be using for searching the literature not only the concepts but also synonyms synonyms mean equal meaning words similar meaning words wherein you have alternative terminologies used also so for example in in some cases for productivity they may say output per acre they may say output per acre mm-hmm. or they may say efficiency so you need to use all these three terms productivity efficiency mm-hmm. and output per acre etc mm-hmm. so only then you will be able to find out all the mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and synonyms use them as so i know it sir i can so once you identify the keywords mm-hmm. then you are ready to mm-hmm. jump into the ocean of literature mm-hmm. which ocean of literature mm-hmm. which is very very vast mm-hmm. my friends let me tell you that in uh, 2007 the world social science bar, bar. Uh, report it mentioned that the doubling time of knowledge social science knowledge was around 22 years in in 1997 but uh, la- uh, last uh, two years back i read another report where it is mentioned that the doubling time of knowledge in social sciences has come down to just 12 years from 22 years it has come down to 12 years that means the knowledge is increasing at such a rapid pace in order to capture all those things we need to be very very careful and here what comes is the databases with databases there are databases both online and offline online uh, offline i told you about the theses is available the books available the journals available the uh, generic sources like encyclopedia dictionaries etc so you can definitely scan uh, skim through in the libraries but that will take a long time and uh, locating a particular source become difficult and thanks to the internet it has made our task very very easy so there are many online academic databases i'll be showing uh, telling about the uh, about them in the uh, later on uh, even in the next session also so choose a relevant academic data- databases so for economics some databases are relevant for history some are relevant for political science some are relevant for sociology some are relevant so like that you have to choose relevant databases just key in the keywords and try to identify the sources and once that is done once you identify the databases then actual search begins but before searching actually you also need to identify inclusion and exclusion criteria inclusion and exclusion criteria for example if you are doing a uh, research on say impact of a government program impact of say government subsidy program then you need to uh, identify whom you include and whom you exclude you know uh, some population in uh, urban areas you you can exclude whereas in the urban areas a slum population you can include so it's like that the the keywords has to be used very carefully putting both inclusion and exclusion criteria and for this purpose you need to define the criteria what criteria you have to define and if you talk to some library science professional he will tell you how to use this inclusion exclusion criteria and based on your concepts based on your concepts you can develop some key terminologies which can be used for collecting the literature so this is the these are the three aspects which you have to keep in mind for developing a search strategy so develop keywords identify databases and define criteria for selecting for example you may you may choose only studies conducted in india choose studies conducted only in english choose studies conducted only in, during the last 20 years because the before 20 years they may not be relevant so like that you have to identify which studies i'm going to refer and which studies i'm not going to refer this is what is inclusion and exclusion criteria so next one is search and select sources next step is to search and select sources so here there are again three aspects to look into one is conduct thorough searches across databases as i said 
there are many many databases available for each subject and best way is to glance through all the databases use your keywords and go to all the databases and try to find out the works that are available so use your time to go to all databases to access all the databases and find out what works are available secondly what material we have to give import because i said because i said it is a ocean of literature it's ocean then which i have to uh, rely upon for my review then second point says that you have to focus on peer reviewed journals why peer reviewed journals it is because the articles are checked they are sent to examiners who review it critically and if there are any mistakes they send it back to the writer and then it is accepted for publication so there is a review process involved in the peer review journal articles so you need to better to focus on peer review journals then similarly books also so books, books also there's an editorial board for from the publishing house and here also please let me tell you focus on standard publishing houses now there are many publishing houses which are not that uh, which do not publish scholarly works but publishing houses like sage concept oxford emerald elsevier so the the known and very famous publishing houses if you select then you will get definitely good books and conference papers also conference papers because they are where the current research is being spoken about in the conference papers the currently ongoing research results are being presented so if you access them we'll come to know what is being done how it is being done and how you can use it in your research or how you can refine it for your research and last but not the least for each of those sources which you have accessed evaluate the relevance and quality so you just simply do not accept everything what is there evaluate its relevance how relevant it is to your study uh, to your context to your research questions to your uh, methodology then also its quality as i said whether it is from a review peer review journal whether it is from a standard publishing company uh, so and whether it is from a very reputed uh, researcher so like that you need to evaluate the quality as well as relevance so once you do this your raw material is ready so conduct thorough searches across all the databases and focus on quality material and then evaluate the relevance to your study don't collect everything only collect whatever is relevant to your study otherwise you'll be ending up collecting too much of information and much of your time may be spent on reviewing literature only which will become very very tedious and cumbersome then I'm, I'm just come to the aspect when i say you have to scan through the resources what resources are available so this is a common or a standard classification of resources that are available you have indexes and abstracts printed journals conference papers dissertations bibliographies theses books internet electronic databases government publications interviews and other unpublished research let me again confess that this is not an exhaustive list you can add it or some you can delete also there is no, nothing wrong in that but it's only a, a indicative list now according to me the first one is of very very prime importance why because the index and indexes and abstracts they give you summary of what research has been going on or what research has been done during a particular period so if uh, you might have come across icssr journal of abstracts of research in particular subject during the last three months it publishes in all social subjects in economics in sociology in political science in history in psychology in commerce in all the social science subjects ICSSR publishes a journal of abstracts of all the research. You know, when I say all the research, it includes papers, it includes books, it includes theses, it includes um, uh, uh, project reports, it includes review articles. So it summarizes all the work done during the last three. It's a uh, quarterly journal. So in the last three months, what has been, has been done, it is summarized. And again, it is divided by subject groupings. I told you subject divisions. 
like uh, for example in economics micro macro public finance development economics international economics agriculture economics gender economics etc so by that you will be able to locate very imp the the needed material for your thing so indexes and abstracts journals are very very useful please uh, subscribe to them or ask your library to subscribe and you will be able to get updated versions of that i have told about journals i have told conference papers dissertations also uh, it may be student dissertations or it may be infill dissertations so uh, you can refer to them they will be in the libraries bibliographies will also be there uh, many agencies publish bibliography in the sense what work has been done for example association of indian universities in its uh, magazine university news publishes list of theses awarded so that can be again a source for you then theses books internet uh, electronic databases government publication and government publications are huge in number and much much underutilized you can definitely get lot of material in those government publication and there are much unpublished research also but unpublished research you can take only if nothing is available if there is a literature available already then please don't go for any unpublished research which will be simply a, a duplication of your efforts so these are the resources that are available now i'm just mentioning about some of the e resources because i said you have to scan through all the resources that are available and now as i said because of internet we have a ocean of electronic resources we what we call it as e resources now i have classified those e resources into three types one is open access resources which are freely available accessible to all so no public no subscription no fees etc it's available to all then there are subscription based databases then there is content pirates we will we'll, we'll see what is content pirates later on but if you look at the open access uh, content you have so many of them doaj do is directory of open access do is directory of open access j is journals so directory of open access journals wherein you have thousands 20 around 20000 journals are listed there you can choose the subject you can choose the year and you can download the issue and if it is relevant to you you can save it otherwise you can delete it so 22000 journals are available in directory of open access journals similarly directory of open access books doab is books so here you have online ebooks available again thousands of them on all subjects you have to choose the subject you have to choose the book and you can download it then doar is directory of open access repositories directory of open access repositories there are repositories which are available online free of cost wherein it is again like a bank of resources again you have to go there open it open it up access it and go by subjects go by individual disciplines and you can open download the resources that is directory of open. again there are so many registries uh, developed by uh, uh, various agencies in countries including india also you know almost all countries have their own registries of academic database you can access them if you just type in the google these things you will be able to access them then you have registry of open access repositories then social science cyber library it is developed by aligarh muslim university of india wherein you have again thousands of journals and millions of articles under that particular aspect for social sciences it is also known as cyberry you can access it easily no issue you can search it then you have national digital library of india it is a government of india initiative so many material is there then social science archive it is open archive of social sciences then you have egan kosh ugc uh, you know department of uh, minister uh, education epg patshala vidyamitra shodhanga a repository of PhD thesis, Shodhagangotri, PhD of thesis center progress. So Shodhaganga and Shodhagangotri can give you access to the research that has been done and research center progress. So you can download a thesis which is done in your area or related to your area. So that is available. Then network, network the digital library of theses and dissertations. That means there are a number of thesis library uh, dissertations which have been networked and they are put in this particular database. That also you can access. Then PubMed. PubMed is for uh, studies related to medicine and health. So, doing in health related aspect, then PubMed is a very, very useful source. You get a lot of materials in there. Then Google Scholar. 
google scholar is the most wonderful source uh, if you are a beginner just go to google scholar type your keyword and you will get the most valuable resources available to begin with and then you can start your research later on google scholar then ugc infonet is there with uh, if your library has access to it then more than 5000 journals are available at free of cost you can definitely do that then you have pdf drive net many of you might have heard it where you can download books any book you can download in pdf drive net which is available so these are open access resources then similarly there are subscription based resources wherein your library can subscribe or if you visit some uh, national institutions like uh, uh, Oakland Institute of Economics or Institute of Economic Growth or uh, maybe Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research, you will get access to this like JSTOR, Project Muse, Wiley Online Library, Science Direct, Cambridge Core, Oxford Econ Academic, EPW, that is Economic and Political Weekly, which is a standard journal. Then uh, Taylor and Francis Online, Sears Journals, Emerald Insight, Web of Science, etc. These are uh, subscription based but these are very very valuable sources for research so wherever if you go to any institution please ask for access and you can download the resources then third is content pirates wherein these are software which hack the subscriptions based sources if you just can you know how to use this source you can download anything even if it is on subscription based you have what i mean i'm only trying to tell is there are resources and there are ways to use them but it is so vast you can definitely get vast amount of resources for your studies then what are the features of these e-resources let me summarize it telling that these resources are up to date you know in some journals even the physical volume will not have come but it will be available online and in advance so it is up to date it is peer reviewed especially much of it is peer reviewed. Most of it is not reviewed, but um, I would say more than 60% of the content available is peer reviewed. You have to quali uh, evaluate the source. You have to evaluate the source, then you will come to know whether it is quality oriented or not. So peer reviewed, it is easy to access. You can download it, you can save it, you can copy it, you can convert it to other form. If it is a PDF, you can convert it to Word. If it is a table, you can convert it to Excel. You can convert it to other formats. Even if it is a di di chart also, you can download it. So it is easy to access. Then you have subject-wise search option. I'm saying subject-wise search option. So in social science archive, you have subject economics. Again, in economics, you have other subjects which you can choose for. Then you, you, it is available in multiple formats. Formats in the sense like Word, PDF, Excel, PowerPoint. So whatever format you want, it is available in multiple format. And uh, it can be subscribed. Some of them can be subscribed to a library where your cost will be very very less so these are the e-resources so once you go to the source and access the findings once you go to the for, uh, source and access the findings then you need to organize yeah. your findings how to organize in the uh, how to organize again there are you, you can do it manually by developing uh, cards, you know, just like in the early level, they're cataloging cards. You can develop your own card kind of thing and you can develop your um, organizing. But now with computers, organization is very, very easy. Again, there are uh, mechanically, it can be done by AI tools. Like for example, you have uh, apps like EndNote, Zotero, Mendeley, etc., which can organize your uh, literature in a very, very useful manner. So organize your findings using the reference management tools and you can group the findings in, 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 in based on your own uh, requirement but i have mentioned three broad th um, <clears throat> broad uh, groupings here one is themes what are the themes in which they follow for example whether the government intervention has helped or not helped so th this is one theme secondly trends what has happened during the last from since past that's a trend over a period of time what has happened chronology so many times we see chronological uh, pointing of uh, the later research. So you can uh, also uh, classify on the basis of chronology. And based, you can also uh, classify, you can also find out where research work is not done. That's the gaps. So you can ident organize your findings, your review based on these uh, various aspects. You can identify themes. Identify, that is themes is similarities, dissimilarities, consensus, difference of opinion then controversies, etc. That's one. And the trends, over a period of time, what has happened? That is trends. And last one is gaps. What gaps are there? You can organize that into those things. Then once you organize, 
the next step is very very significant and that is analysis and synthesis you are not simply summarizing the work you are putting your own judgment you are critiquing it you are critically looking at it so what you do here you summarize key points of each source critically analyze strengths and weaknesses so whether the methodology was right whether the form of question asked was right whether sampling was right whether data collection method was right whether data analysis tool was it so on all aspects you try to put it to the litmus test see whether it was rightly done or wrongly done so you you critically analyze the strengths and weaknesses of each point which you have observed and remember the point is related to your study relevant to your study. it is not a common thing it is relevant to your study you critically analyze and then and then synthesize insights into a cohesive narrative once you analyze the strengths and weaknesses, then you organize them into an argument of your own. That is, this is the theme which has been said by these these people, and this is how they have, uh, the, the, a new concept. Okay. Then, how do you write the literature review? In, the, in writing literature review, there are three parts. One is in in the introduction, the research question and purposes are put up. Then then you have body wherein you you arrange the literature review in thematic or chronological fashion then you summarize the findings identify the gaps and highlight the contribution this is the conclusion so literature review again is not simply simply a jotting down of points it is putting a systematic way of writing what is the way research uh, literature review is done how it is done, what are the findings, and how you are going to go ahead, how you are going to move ahead. That is the uh, thing. This is how you have to organize your literature review. And uh, you might have seen the Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, this is usually uh, discussed in NAC framework, Bloom's taxonomy. So there are different levels of cognitive uh, parameters. From mere remembering, we go up to creating. So even while doing your literature review, you need to first understand, analyze, evaluate, and then come out with your own arguments. So, even, friends, even when you're writing your objectives, please stick on to these things. Please see that uh, some of the verbs that you use, they cater to some of the cognitive domains as mentioned in the Bloom's taxonomy. So, please keep this in mind when you're developing your own arguments. Okay. And having searched the literature, having done the literature review, having written it, there is always a danger of plagiarism. Plagiarism is copying the sources without giving due credit to the original thinker, original writer. And many a times in social science, it so happens that uh, what I have thought, maybe somebody might have thought earlier. Now I, I write as though it is my thought, but that is not so. It has been done by somebody else before. So we need to give do credit to that if plagiarism comes then obviously you know thesis will not be accepted for submission so how, and especially literature review since it is review of others work the the danger of plagiarism is more so how to avoid that so keep track of what you do find what you do from the beginning what you find from the beginning so try to maintain the second point is a uh, complement to the first point. Record full details of the resources you, you will be using. So whatever document you collect, whatever literature you identify, maintain the full details of the source, where, who, who wrote it, from in which source you took, in which year it was published, who was the publisher, what was the page number. So don't forget to include the page numbers. So what was the page number? So com use complete referencing pattern so that you will be able to say that, no, this is not my idea. It was his, and I have used it like that. And make good quality notes. Don't just copy. Copy paste is not a good option. You have to convert it into your own ideas. You develop your own ideas using the ideas given by others. And be consistent. Consistent is in terms of uh, tense, in terms of gender, in terms of work. Be consistent in what you do. So it's a grammatical part. Because ultimately, English is a foreign language, which you are not... Uh, uh, complacent with but anyway we need to follow some rules of grammar while presenting it then plan in advance and do little bit every day so you have to plan and you have to do reviewing day on day basis so that it will be easy for you to collect information 
mention the source and thereby avoid the plagiarism aspect and that's what i said you have to cite your sources properly cite all the sources whatever document you have collected you have to cite all the citing is mentioning the references from where you have taken and for that purpose there are different citation styles and usually the more common citation styles are APA, that is American Psychological Association style, MLA, Modern Language Association style, and Chicago style are used. And uh, for social sciences, we normally use APA style. And that APA style is also available in MS World. If you go to referencing tab, you can, uh, you can access that and you can develop a citation style. And each of these citation styles have their own rules have their own uh, yeah, yeah. patterns as to what to write for the name, what to write for the title, what to write for the book, what to write for the publisher, etc. And you have to follow those rules. So better learn the citation styles. Now, of course, the AI tools are available. I will be telling you about that later on. And uh, anyway, but you have to master those tools also. You have to learn those tools also. So once you do this, your uh, works will not be suspected for plagiarism so cite them properly and cite them in an accepted style so whether it is epa mla or chicago style you need to cite them then what are the tips for effective literature review so i know it is one of the most boring job in research because where to go where to collect what uh, material to collect how to organize it how to analyze it and how to write it all these are very tedious jobs but there are some tips which i can share with you for effective literature review stay organized and nowadays you need not go anywhere if you have a computer connected to the internet you can get all the literature available and that is why you need to use suitable tools and techniques uh, I'll be telling you about the tools and techniques. Even Wikipedia will give you a lot of material. Google will give you a lot of material. But Wikipedia and Google, they give you uh, uncritical or non-critical literature. But if you have to go to, and you have to summarize yourself. But if you use some other tools, it may get summary automatically. So summarizing techniques are available. You have to, if you can use them, that is very, very better. So stay organized. And uh, the advantage of these tools is, uh, it can help you to organize into files, folders, subject wise, doing etc., which is very, very easy for you to manage. So, therefore, please stay organized. Then, secondly, be critical in the sense don't just copy and paste. Try to read through the content, whether it is relevant to you, if relevant, how relevant, if not relevant, why not relevant, how you could improve upon that irrelevancy, etc. So, that you need to um, think of. So, be critical. Don't just to summarize but analyze then most important is stay current stay current so include the most latest research that has been done otherwise you your literature itself will be out of date up not up to date and uh, obsolete outdated which will not serve any purpose so stay current then be comprehensive so as far as possible cover all relevant aspects so when if there's a study on a particular aspect like poverty then you have to say, uh, uh, how do you define poverty? How do you count poverty? Uh, how do you um, study the living conditions of poor? How do you, uh, uh, what programs of government are there? What is the impact of government programs? So as far as possible, try to cover all aspects. It is not like a uh, six blind men touching an elephant. It should not be like six blind men touching an elephant. So it should be a holistic view of the elephant, uh, explaining it and also Telling it what is bad, what is good, etc. Okay, so be comprehensive, cover all relevant aspects, and seek feedback. Once you do the review of a particular theme or a paper, then you better show it to somebody else, maybe your guide or maybe your peer, peer, peer in the sense some senior researcher. So he will be able to tell you whether you are on the right track or not. If you do this, you can definitely do a good research literature review. Now I have here a slide to just tell you what is a good literature review and what is not. So there are two columns here, a good literature review and a poor literature review. Let me read out what is a good literature review. Poor, I need not uh, read. 
So a good literature review is a synthesis of available research. It is a synthesis. It is not merely <clears throat> Mr. A said this, Mr. B said this, Mr. C said this. No, it is an idea. And who all have said correct or uh, same thing about that idea or who all have said uh, different thing about that idea. So it is a synthesis of ideas and not merely a, a, a description of who have written about that. Secondly, it is a critical evaluation. I've been telling you, you have to mention the good things about it, the bad things about it, the correct things about it, the incorrect things about it, systematic things about it, unsystematic things about it. You need to be very, very critical about that. But uh, And only then it becomes a good literature review. Then it has appropriate breadth and depth. As I said, it should be comprehensive, it should be up to date, and you should cover all the aspects. So only then it will be uh, good literature. It has clarity and conciseness. So even when you refer hundreds of books, hundreds of papers, but still it has to be very, very brief, very brief, only giving the, 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 the um, what do you say, summary of ideas, what is it? So it's clear and concise and use rigorous and consistent methods. So be rigorous in the sense, it is the techniques and tools used in your discipline. Don't just uh, use common man's uh, discipline methodology. Use the methodology identified in your discipline, and that is what is the rigor and consistency in your methodologies. So, if you follow this, you can develop, definitely develop good literature review. Now, some common pitfalls to avoid. So, uh, how do we fall into trap of doing a bad research uh, literature review? There are four points here. One is over reliance on secondary sources. Secondary sources means uh, it, there's a thesis already on this particular topic. I only take out what has been done there. I do not personally go and review the literature. That should not happen. That, or what I mean to say is there is a review already published. Then I use the same review. No, that has to be. You have to again put your own critic, your own assessment on that. So better prioritize on your own primary search also. That is very, very important. Then go beyond descriptive review. You have to be critical. You have to be, don't just describe, but criticize, critic, criticate, how good, how bad, how systematic, how unsystematic, etc. You have to criticate. Then ignoring, sometimes what we do is, we ignore contradictory findings, which are not you know, good to us, which are not uh, suitable to us, we just avoid. No, please don't avoid that. As I was mentioning, you have to mention differences, controversies, etc. So this is where the contradictory findings come to come into question. You have to include that. Then plagiarism is another important. We forget to collect the source, but right from the day one, you please keep on writing all the sources from where you have been taking a particular idea. That will help you to uh, get into the proper literature. So these are some of the common pitfalls that have to be avoided. Then to come to the end of the presentation, I would say conducting literature review is meticulous and is always rewarding. You will be more learned than anybody else in that area. In fact, you can guide your guide about the literature that is available, about the concepts, about the methodology, etc. So you'll be more learned if you do your literature review properly. It is very rewarding and it lays the groundwork for your research. I said the concepts, the theory, the methodology, the data analysis tools, the data, uh, uh, the interpretations, etc. You get some starting point from this literature review only. So it is, it lays the groundwork for your research. And you have to follow steps and tips for a thorough review. So whatever I have uh, given as some of the tips and steps, you need to do that in a proper manner. So. Usually we say literature review is sitting on the giants of shoulders. You know, one somebody said Albert Einstein had done a wonderful work. Einstein said, no, no, I only, I have sat on the giants of the shoulders and looked beyond. Sh giants are the persons who have already worked. Giants, they're giants, G-I-A-N-T-S, giants. And you are just sitting on, the sh on their shoulders to look beyond them. They have seen some limited view, but you are looking more than that. So you have to sit on the shoulders of the jains and then look beyond for your work so uh, i hope i have made myself clear as to what is literature review and how to do it uh, i think i will end my uh, session here and i'm open for discussion
anyone has doubt please ask to sir yes ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ National okay. Institute of Mall Industry, uh, some training institute is there, extension training, etc. Logo Udyog, I, I think it is Logo Udyog. That is one interesting uh, journal which you can take up. Then there is another journal called as Journal of Industrial Relations. There also you can find certain uh, material. And um, according to me, the Economic and Political Weekly, can give you a lot of uh, uh, sources and apart from that some of the online sources which are mentioned for example directory of open access journals there if you go there you 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 get a lot of things and there is one institute in delhi called as institute for studies in industrial development isid institute for studies in industrial development it publishes research in industrial economics you can just visit the website of that isid and you can get lot of things okay sir thank you so much yeah. i have noted down all this thank you sir. yes good morning uh, good afternoon sir yeah good afternoon madam uh, sir when you spoke about keeping a tab of the literature review we had done Uh, okay. uh can you please explain is there any app or is there any some way in which we can keep a tab on the various literature review papers we have read everything yeah so in fact uh, any is, system see when you download a particular source so initially better classify them as folders okay sub folders then after you s- summarize you can save the summary in that folder only that is one way okay that th- thematic folders second what i would suggest is now there are many artificial ai tools available and there you have the option of creating folders sub folders and saving the, the, then and there itself you can do that it's not a very difficult thing madam but, but only thing is you will have to be clear about what thematic divisions you have made what thematic divisions you have made and accordingly you have to make folders and whatever source you download it has to be it has to go into that folder that is what i can say okay thank you sir yeah, welcome anyone else hello ha oh, madam anyone else who has doubt i think hello ha no. yes ma'am hello uh, uh, hello sir uh, good afternoon yeah, i'm yeah uh, i'm assistant professor saili patel sir i have a, uh, uh, i just want to ask you is there any kind of journal present for restaurant industry restaurant industry in fact i have not come across because i have not, that is not my area of research okay. but definitely you can uh, find it in the uh, actually, uh, actually my topic uh, is an impact of labor turnover cost on restaurant profitability in pune city okay so you have many concepts you have labor turnover yeah. you have cost then you have yeah. uh, restaurant industry etc so yeah, you need yeah. to search databases accordingly Yes, as sir. I was telling, there is Indian Journal of Labor Economics. Okay, there is sir. Industrial, Indian uh, Journal of Industrial Relations. Okay, then sir. Then I said there is in, uh, ISID database. That is Institute of Studies in Industrial Labor database is there. Okay, then there is sir. Visit Hyderabad, etc. But as yes, far as sir. restaurant industry is concerned, uh, yeah. you have now a lot of database. If you, but I think you need to visit FICI or uh, CIA database. FICI and CIA database. when there okay. are sector specific studies 
sector specific okay. studies okay. definitely you will get some uh, insights there yes sir thank you thank you yes uh, sir one small question on yeah. trade agreements uh, any international economics books uh, or uh, journals that you can recommend yeah, there are many many of them foreign trade review is the most uh, widely used uh, source foreign trade review, review. Uh, but uh, whether your library procures it or not we have to check otherwise if you go to any uh, national institution like gokhale institute or uh, bombay university library or even shivaji university library you will get copies of that even pune university library will be having that foreign trade review you will get that but apart from that wto website itself has a lot of content on uh, trade agreements and uh, anktad also is there anktad is also there then wto website is also there if you go there you will get a lot of material even european union website also you can access for these trade agreements then you have uh, these free trade areas like safta nafta sarc etc european union. so they also will give you a lot of material on these trade uh, agreements thank you sir yeah welcome sonali madam good afternoon sir good afternoon sir yeah madam your voice is very low actually sir i just want to ask you like when you write a literature review mm. it is a tabular form Haan. or a paragraph form <laughs> very good question madam very really interesting oh, oh. question Varsha i just madam karna in fact you have to organize it in a tabular form okay. but writing Kuch has to be in ka? text form Okay. Tabular form is to make your work easier. Ha, For example, ha, ha. your columns, Thank like you. the author yes. and the title, Thank your you. your they objectives, you have methodology, you your findings, etc. No, yes. Yes. so that will help you to find out themes like similarities, dissimilarities, okay. controls, etc. So, and last column is remarks. There you can write whether it is relevant hmm. or not. No. So, tabular form is for identifying for making your work easier. But okay. presentation has to be done in a text manner but if you present tables also there is nothing wrong okay, okay. there is nothing wrong if you present tables also okay, thank you so much sir yes madam yes anyone else i think no varsha madam hello hello yes ma'am ha huh. Yes. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Yes. 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 Thank you, sir. On behalf of Professor Ramkrishna Mohre College, Department of Commerce, for delivering session of systematic review of literature. Thank you again. Thank you. I also have to say thank you our principal, Dr. Lobo sir, for allowing us to take PhD course work and support. Sir, you have second section on preparation of research report. You. we will join again for the next session on 4 o'clock thank you sir okay thank you thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank you thank you we will join on 4 o'clock thank yes, you yes, so much sir. Thank, thank you, you. very informative session thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you ma'am hello